Hey everybody, this is Alchemisted. This is once again Star Trek Online, Rise of the Red Shirt, finally back after a long break over the winter holiday, and we're going to be continuing with Sharian Swords, but before we do, I forgot to do something last time, and I forgot to do it because there's really, it's not very important, but I forgot to read the end of mission last time. Excuse me. Captain, let's see, Captain, we've lost contact. Hail, s no, don't drop it. Hail, Starfleet. The crew of the Griffin is recovering from their ordeal, Admiral. You save their lives, as well as the lives of anyone else who would have, who would have been caught in the Herogen's trap, which is, is not true, because we killed them all. If you don't believe me, go watch Trapped. So you get a Quantum Mine Launcher, a te uh, Tetrion Beam Array, dual Tetrion Beam Banks, uh, dual Heavy Cannons, all are uncommon. Pretty much vendor trash. Uh, so feel free to take one of these and uh, put it where it belongs in the recycle bin. Um, so next up we're going to be doing Charian Swords. So let's go ahead and get this underway because god it's been long enough. Uh, let's see. This is the last of the original Romulan missions. We are at the Romulan Arc. The Romulan Arc, whose climax, you may recall, we actually played uh, two missions ago. I don't know why the Romulan Arc continues after Taurus. So, Shari and Sword stop the Romulan research into Borg technology before it's too late. Um, this is kind of dumb. And I will explain why. It's because uh, Romulan's researching Borg technology is actually going to come in to play later on in the game. Way into the Undine missions. So, uh, yeah. Before we start, know that everything that happens in this mission is pointless. <laughs> you don't stop the Romulan's research into Borg technology at all. So, let's go. Replay. Starfleet Command has finished its analysis of the information you found in the Hadrian system, and we've reached a decision. We cannot allow the Romulans to continue their research into Borg technology. We want you to enter Romulan space and proceed to the Demora system. Once there, find the ships that the Romulans are building and destroy them. We also want you to stop them from continuing the project, so you'll need to take out their infrastructure and any Borg material they have at their location as well. It's not Starfleet's policy to make a preemptive strike, but with the war with the Klingons and the threat of what the Romulans could do with this technology, we see this as the best option to save lives. So, as a reward, you will get the Numeri Regenerative Shield Array. Like all Regenerative Shield Arrays, it is utter crap. Uh, you get the Combat Hyper Impulse Engines Mark 11, which are a bit better. Especially if it's your first time in the game, you're going and you're flying around in a cruiser, combat impulse engines are the way to go. Uh, prototype gravitic modulation impulse engines... Eh, they could be decent. Uh, at the very least, they'll... No, actually, the, uh, the combat hyper impulse engines, the Numiri... Yeah, these actually give you more energy credits if you want to recycle them. So, prototype gravitic uh, modulation impulse engines. I think these are the impulse engines that a lot of people used to use all the way into end game because they were so reliable. And then they got uh, super nerfed. Um, so, yeah, they're very... I believe they're much slower than they used to be. 15.2, yeah... Impulse flight speed. I don't know, actually. Uh, much higher turn rate than the combat hyper impulse engines. So uh, that probably that's probably going to be something you want to factor in. You can of course get like regular combat impulse engines, but not only will they will they not get you very many energy credits, but there's better options right up here above them. So, although I'm unsure if these appear on a replay or. Not some of the some of the loot only appears on a replay, but if you're going if you're replaying this mission, if you want a decent set of impulse engines uh, to carry you through the rest of the game, or for at least a long while, the gravitic modulation ones might be the way to go. 
Uh, if you're just looking for something to sell or a half decent piece of equipment, uh, these two might be the way to go. Uh, these are these uncommon ones. Leave them. Not worth it. Let's go ahead and accept. Didn't make it primary. Like it never does, unless it's messing with me. Romulan front. Uh, Sharian swords. There we go. Let's head to Demoras. Captain, we've arrived in the Demora system and are approaching Sharian Station. We will need to disable the communication satellites and take out base defenses before we can beam down to the station. I recommend disabling the satellites before dealing with the station. It's, you just said the same thing. Not like five seconds ago. Hang on, mission. We've arrived at, Demor at the Demora system and are approaching Sharian Station. We will need to disable the communication satellites and take out the base defenses before we can beam down to the station. I recommend disabling the satellites before dealing with the station itself. You, that's, you just said, said the same general thing twice. Repetition in writing. This will prevent the Romulans from sending out a call for reinforcements. Alright. So, I'm assuming these nav beacons would be the satellites he speaks of. Oh, hi. Yeah. That wasn't going to go their way. Spoiler alert, the Romulans here are screwed. Okay, where's that other one? Over there. Please send something after me that's bigger than a Mogai for your sake, I beg of thee. That was a little off target. Die. Die. yet. Are we done yet? Okay. No dialogue. It's probably going to jump in at the most inopportune time, like usual. Yep. Captain Sharian Station is aware of our presence. The Romulans have begun transporting crews of the unmanned ships around the station. We have a small amount of time to destroy those ships before the crews are in place and they are battle ready. Alright. IRW Bloodfire. IRW Elieth. That's not as good as Bloodfire. Sorry. You lose. You lose anyways, but you lose more now because your name is not Bloodfire. Bloodfire? That's more like a Klingon name for a ship than a Romulan one. Who the hell was captain of that? Don't tractor me, bro. Oh, 
IRW Terrava. Better, better, but it's still no blood fire. Then again, what is? Die. And now you die. Don't track to me, bro. You know what? Screw this shit. I win, you lose. Station defenses are inoperative, sir. We can beam down at your command. I command it! At least he didn't call it the OA team. It's the hazard team, people. Get with the fucking program. Okay. Let's see. Beam down. So you may have noticed I didn't go on an epic rant at the very beginning. Well, I kind of want to get Shari and Sword out of the way because I really, really, really want the Romulan arc over. Oh my god, people, you have no idea. If I sound bored, it's because I am. Because I know that nothing that you do in this mission matters. At all. It doesn't matter. Because they show up with Borg tech in the Undine arc. So... You didn't blow up all their ships with Borg tech. You didn't stop the program from. You didn't stop their program researching Borg tech, and somehow they managed to slip past both the Federation and Klingon fleets guarding the only reliable, expedient form of transportation to and from a massive Borg war zone. So, yeah, nothing you do in this mission matters at all. All you really do is slow them down, and even then, probably not very much. So again, we have yet another underwhelming mission that's really oddly placed in the storyline set after the climax of the Romulan arc. It's... It's weird. Uh, so the new climax of the Romulan arc is Cloaked Intentions. Cloaked Intentions originally took place after the game, and in my opinion, this mission... This mission could have been moved to after the return, where you found out, oh crap, you know, the Romulans are still working on Borg tech. If they, had, when they reshuffled the missions, if they had moved Shari and Swords to after the return, and then they would, could have had Cloaked Intentions, and then Maul Rehan, that would probably have made more narrative sense. Especially when you, th when you consider that they say Maul Rehan takes place a week after Sela was abducted. There's a whole freaking story arc after that. There's like 20 missions in the Cardassian arc. Plus the Borg, and uh, plus like the the Deferi featured episode series, then the uh, the the Borg and the Undine missions, and all the STFs take place in the space of a week. I don't freaking think so. So yeah, shit make no sense. Let's go ahead and go into the station and uh, do nothing of actual consequence. I know, it, it, it has to sound like I'm coming down hard on this mission. And I am. It makes no sense. It, it, you accomplish nothing here. Captain, there's an energy signature that corresponds with Borg technology on the deck above us. But the turbo lifts are offline. We will need to restore power to them before we can proceed. So, uh... There's Borg technology right there, too. In fact, there's Borg technology in her hands. Um, that is one of the Mark 12... Uh, variants of the gear. I think I gave her the tactical drone one. Actually, she used to have the maintenance drone. Um, so, 
Yeah, so, like, the other reason why this mission really gets on my tits, and I'll come back to this in, um, in the return, is because... If you go into TV tropes, there's a trope called protagonist-censored morality. And, uh, Star Trek Online suffers from this in spades. So, you are, for much of the game, you spend at least a few missions. More than a few, probably. I'm probably forgetting a couple. But, uh, you spend quite a few missions in the game stopping other people from using Borg tech because it's dangerous. Uh, the problem with that is... Is... Is, 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 is... You go to Omega Rep and look! Look! You know, you get in, like, like immediately after spending the entire game going, you can't, like, th the Borg are dangerous, okay? This, this is not stuff you should mess with. You know, what we get into Cloaked Intentions, the first mission has a moment where, the, where it's like, <gasps> they were studying Borg technology, what the hell? You know, and then later on you get a full set of Borg ship to make your ship look like it's been boarded and assimilated. Two! Two sets! Two sets of Borg gear in this game that you can have equipped at once! You can have two sets of Borg gear equipped at once! Man! This is... Ah! Do as I say, not as I do, basically. Then again, this game portrays Starfleet in a very negative light anyways. That didn't fire off. Okay. Take that. I will take that, sir. Die. Thank you. Brave medic. It's an interesting thing. Uh, target, having to target the medics first. That's not something that's exclusive to Stowe. That's in all games, but, uh... It's something you usually want to do. You always want to get the healer out of the way, because they're usually right there, uh, making all your efforts meaningless. Healing the entire enemy team. It's actually regarded, I believe, as a... What's it called? The law, It's against the laws and customs of war, I believe. Although, it's not a, really a complaint, though. Uh, I think it's mentioned in, like, Deep Space Nine that Klingons give not a crap what color your uniform is or what uh, capacity you're serving in. You're a target if the Klingons show up. Um, and I kind of liked that in Deep Space Nine. You know, the laws and customs of war were laws and customs that humanity had made, not aliens. You know, they couldn't give a crap. This console's facing the wrong direction. I really hope that's not baked into the map, because that's not... that That's awkward, unless, unless they're supposed to be standing behind it. But no, there's an identical thing across from here, and it's facing the right direction. This is facing the wrong direction, too, and there's no way somebody's going to be standing between those. I mean, hang on. You guys, go stand. Go stand over there. Um, I mean, maybe, you know... You know, somebody's, like, uh, doing their business here, you know? It's like doing their 9 to 5 standing here. I can see that. But I'm pretty sure this is not right. Uh, and this isn't right either. That's going to be really awkward, having to reach over that console. This is the only one that's right. I really hope these consoles aren't baked into there. I don't remember... I don't remember this. I don't remember... I don't remember them facing this direction. Must be a bug that happened later. Uh, one of the few uh, skyboxes you'll see does really super low res, though. I mean, I mean, take a look at this. Look, look at the skybox. Welcome back to like 1992, 1994, 
That's yeah. Didn't I blow that up? I blew those up. That one's gone. Who the hell is that? Who the hell is that? You made me blow those up. Ah, even the skybox can't keep this story straight. Um. God, look how low res that is. Wow. If you're gonna have a skybox, it better be like a like up upscaled. You know, it better be like an upscaled uh, Targa or uh, Targa or BMP or something, because uh, yeah. That's pretty... yeesh. You're probably not seeing, like, the jagginess in this, uh, like, like video. You're probably not going to see that, but, uh, trust me, it's pretty low res. I remember them saying that they up all the textures, like, 4X or something, when they, uh, started normal mapping everything. They could have up this as well. Or gone back, like, made a better, like, uh, retextured it. It does its job, though. It does its job. Something, something, and, and this is something that they that they could kind of take to heart nowadays. Is you don't always need to render everything outside. Uh, sometimes, for simple immersion, uh, a bitmap will do, or an FMV. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding with the FMVs either. Sometimes you can like just put like, like make a texture and assign an FMV to that texture. And if you position it right, if the parallax works correctly, you can actually make it look like a real scene that's going on. And if you don't believe me, go play Parasite Eve 2. Because you, you run into that, like, at the very beginning, when you're going to, the, like, the first uh, area of the game. The, uh, the Acropolis Tower, I think it's called, if I remember right, if memory serves. Uh, you go there, and there is this, and, th and this is back when, like, Square Enix, not Square Enix... Never called. Never. They, it wasn't Square Enix. Uh, it was Square Soft. This is back when Square Soft was on top of their game, as opposed to now when all they make is crappy Final Fantasy 13s and uh, continue to deny that Final Fantasy Versus 13 has been cancelled. Just call it Final Fantasy 15 at this point, guys. Really? You know, like, just change the name to Final Fantasy 15 and for Fuck's sake, give us a world map. A world map. And towns. And side quests. And an actual story that makes sense. Come on, Square Enix. I know you have it in you. Somewhere. Deep, 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 deep down. So far down that you don't even realize you have it. There's some talent in your company. And you should show it. But yeah, if you want to see like a like impressive an impressive use of FMV to establish a scene, uh, go ahead and like check out the opening to Parasite Eve Two. Uh, not well, not the opening, but uh, the very beginning when you're heading out to the Acropolis Tower from uh, the protagonist's car. Uh, there's like this wide, there's like this panning tracking shot that follows her as you're moving uh, down. Uh, you're moving through this crime scene, basically, and it it shows just, like, the chaos and, like, all the emergency response people, like, just, like, in the streets working, scrambling, uh, just, just, just like, fi this, like, uh, this helicopter's on fire. Um, you know, it, it does a really good job of establishing the scene. So you don't need to render out everything that's out there. You know? Uh, there was a, this is one of the reasons why I love classic games so much is because classic games uh, had to do the best with what they had and if you play a lot of classic games go play a lot of the old Final Fantasy games go play seven eight nine there was this artistry with how they would use little things uh, like F like CG um, pre-rendering uh, Targa backgrounds you know just there was this artistry about it where they got away with so much by doing so little. 
you know, sometimes less is more when it comes to establish, establishing shots or setting up an area or a scene. You don't always have to render everything in-engine right then and there to make something really cool. And this is one of my complaints about Mal Rehan, is some of these cutscenes take place in large social zones. These didn't have to take place there. The, the guided tour the guy gives you of Mal Rehan is rendered in-engine, and uh, it's buggy. It It's buggy as hell, because it, it, it's panning constantly through this massive social zone. So, th so you have, like, textures, objects popping in. His dialogue, you know, slows down so much that uh, while it's still playing, his next line of dialogue starts playing over his previous one, and he gets cut off. You know, you didn't have to... That did not have to be in-engine. You could have rendered that in-engine, but then you could have set it as a pre-rendered cutscene and gotten away with the same thing with much less worry. The same thing for the scene with Detan in his office on Marihan. Uh, Detan, you get this cutscene of Detan in his office, and uh, this didn't need to be in engine. In fact, it's right next to the major transit hub of the map. So this cutscene is always, always weird whenever you look at it. You could have pre-rendered that and played the FMV when the person goes to click on the rock that shows you where the recording is and you would have gotten away with the same thing that you were trying to do, but you would have been able to do it with a bit less stress, uh, with a bit less wear and tear on the engines, and with a bit less frustration from the player. Uh, same thing with a lot of cutscenes, really. A lot of the cutscenes, I can see why the arrival scene isn't pre-rendered. I get where they were trying to do with it, but uh, I already, I've already said my thoughts on that one back uh, I forget which which it was. Was it Taurus or was it Trapped? It might have been Taurus where I talked about that. Um, but yeah, something to bear in mind for those for those of you who are um, uh, who play a lot of games. Uh, keep your eyes out on like the little things they do, you know, instead of like doing really big things. Uh, especially if you play lots of classic video games, take a look around sometime. Especially if you like Lindblom in uh, Final Fantasy IX. Take a look around that place. Uh, but, okay, that's, uh, I have to go click on this now to continue this mission. The turbo lifts are active now, sir. We can proceed at your command. Why would we have to, why would I have to command us to proceed? Because we got we got stuff to do. Now I think we're just gonna take a break. Let them finish their Borg research. Okay. There it is. Scratch. Captain, the com... Okay, I, I read that wrong. <laughs> For a moment I thought that was misspelled. It's not. Captain, the commander of Sharian Station should be on this deck. Recommend we proceed with caution, and that we look for any additional information we can find about the Romulan adaptations of Borg technology. Okay. So, this is literally the same map in reverse. So, before I was talking about doing small things to get away with a lot. Now I'm coming down on the other side. Uh, because this is also something that happens on Mal Rehan is uh, reusing the same damn map. So the Tier 5 mission on Malrehan is literally the Tier 4 mission with an additional cutscene at the end. It's literally, you have to do everything for the Tier 4 mission, and then you get the Tier 5 cutscene. There is, there is no unique mission for Tier 5 Romulan rap. It's ridiculous. Okay? This is where I come down on the other extreme. You know, reusing reusing that map was lazy. It's a cool map. 
you know, it's you got you got a great map there, and you could have gotten some better, more mileage out of it if you wanted to reuse it by having the player do something different in it, other than doing the pr having to take the previous mission. This actually confused me a lot uh, because I got a message saying I had to go back to the underground ruins, but I went up to the door of the underground ruins and I couldn't go in. So it took me a moment to realize they wanted me to take the tier four mission again. Um, They wanted me to, to take the previous mission again, go through the previous mission... By the way, there's a massive dick moment at the previous mission. Um, Tier 4 Romulan Rep has a huge dick moment in it where... Uh, basically, you have to uh, hit these control consoles in order to uh, keep uh, a few consoles from overloading. You have to. There's this timed sequence. You basically... Whenever something says, I'm overloading, there's another console that's probably facing the wrong direction. Whenever something says, I'm overloading, you have to run over to it and uh, interact with it before it blows up. And you have to keep at least two consoles going out of four. Uh, so you do this, and they're constantly spawning Tholians on you. This was a surprise to me at first, but they're easily dealt with. Then it spawns a captain, and captains are such a pain in the ass. Cryptic has a really... I'm going to go out and say it. Cryptic has a problem with boss fights. They don't really know how to do them. Uh, there is actually only one uh, dyed-in-the-wool, unique, interesting boss fight in this game, and that's against the Doomsday Machine. And um, other than that, like, like basically they just consider... Uh, like, Cryptic's idea of a boss fight is just this overpowering enemy who is not fun to fight in any way, shape, or form. And this wasn't an STF, either. This th this was just, like, a regular Romulan rep mission. Uh, they send the Stolian captain, who will constantly spawn energy, just like fucking radiation crystals. And I'm pretty sure that destroying these radiation crystals harms you. In fact, destroying these radiation crystals repeatedly wiped out my entire crew. They would target the thing and shoot at it, and then it would blow up and they'd all die. So, this thing starts slowly damaging you. You can't destroy it to stop it from damaging you or everybody dies. Um, you can call your bridge officers away, but that's assuming they'll listen to you, because nine times out of ten, they won't. They'll be stuck on some geometry, or they'll be under attack and unable to retreat. So, yeah, Tholian captains, not fun. Apparently we won't leave here alive. But yeah, it's literally, you have to go through the same mission again, and I was, uh, I was actually, like, bitching to a Veculus about it immediately after doing it. It was fun. I was having a really great time with that mission. Like, the, like that mission did not need, a, like, a boss fight at the end of it. Like, boss fights aren't something you want to shove all over the place. You know, boss fights are something that should be, uh, they should be few and far between. Um, they should be something that is unique, something that is fun. Um... You know, and they should have something different about them. That's why I consider the only real boss fight this game has uh, would have to be Doomsday Device, because it fits all of those criteria. Um, it's probably the most unique battle the game offers, and the most interesting. Uh, you certainly don't fight an enemy like that very much, if at all, for the rest of the game. Uh... There are lots of, like, big starship fights, like the Borg Unimatrix ships, which make no sense whatsoever, but they're there. Uh, there's, you know, the Borg Queen Diamond. There are, like, the various Dreadnoughts, the Tholian Tarantulas. But those aren't boss fights either. Those are battleship raids. And if you want to understand what I mean by a battleship raid, go play Colony Wars 3 Red Sun. Go play Descent Free Space, and you get what I mean when I say battleship raid. It's a kind of boss fight in space, but not really. It's basically just a, a really big, uh, tough enemy. Like, it's a, big, it's a big giant nut that the player has to crack, basically, is all they are. Um, so, again, not really a proper boss fight. Uh, the Borg Queen actually comes close in, uh, into the hive, but that fight is so aggravatingly stupid, you spend most of the fight hiding behind a pillar. 
You know, you spend most of the fight hiding behind a pole because the entire floor electrifies. Not at once, but it's enough to just to take you out of that fight. You know, I don't want to have to hide behind a pillar to, you know, like, escape the floor. I don't want to have to worry about the floor. I want to fight a fun boss. And that's the thing that Cryptic really doesn't get when they design boss fights, is they're supposed to be fun. Like, they're supposed to be challenging, certainly. They can be hard to be fun. Anybody who's played God Hand knows this, but... There's a difference between challenge and aggravation. There's a line there that they don't quite get where it is, and they end up crossing it constantly. Armac is a great example. I'm a tactical officer. Whenever, whenever the time comes to fight Armac, I am almost always not in that fight. I'm standing in the corner because I can't get up to him because A, his chain lightning will bounce off of me and kill everybody else, you know, and B, they have overpowered him so much that the only reliable way to take him down is to have a science officer run in there and just heal tank him until he drops. That's not fun. You have put one person, maybe two people, in the fight with Armac, actually playing the game, and three people in the party are just watching. They are practically non-participants. That is not a fun boss fight. So... Yeah. <sighs> I don't even remember where I was go what I was talking about originally. I just ended up on this big boss fight spiel. Tholians, yeah, the Tholian captain. He's a massive asshole. Yes, he is. Anyways. But but that's all it was. It was just they reused the same map and uh and there was this additional The cutscene is awesome, don't get me wrong. In fact, that cutscene goes back to something I was actually talking about. I was very pleasantly surprised by that cutscene. Uh, I was actually, you know, I was looking at this and I was like, This is the stuff I was talking about! You know, it's, where, is, where the hell has this been? You know, it's going back to that. You know, like, I, I made it like an audio log a couple weeks ago. Was it a couple weeks ago? I think it was a couple weeks ago. Uh, where I was like, Last week, not a couple weeks ago, geez. Uh, I was like, this is what I was talking about. Where the hell has this been? Because it was awesome. It was really well done. Uh, they did a really good job rendering it. Uh, the writing, they did a really good job with the writing. They did a really good job using the environment to tell a, uh, a piece of a story, I should call it. And uh, it, it leaves you wanting to know, it, w it leaves you wanting to find out what the other pieces to that story may be and how they may fit together. So, yeah, they did a really good, good job with that. The suffering was worth the cutscene, or uh, the, the cutscene was worth all the suffering. I'm confused now. Ultimate suffering. But that Tholian captain is ultimate suffering, God. You know, it shouldn't... He's just such a douche. You know, he's just so crazy with the, with his stupid webbing and his stupid radiation crystals. They're ne The Tholian captains are never a fun fight. I've, I've fought them a bunch of times now, and they're just not fun. They're just jerks. You know... If, if, at the, if you're going to spawn a Tholian captain, then at the very least, don't spawn like a massive crowd of trash mobs around him, because even a well-equipped party is going to have their hands full just with the captain. Like, if you're going to throw a captain at, the, at, a, at, a, at a player or a player and boff party, the captain will do, because just, he, just him on his lonesome is annoying enough. If you're going to be jerks, don't be jerks to the point of excess, is what I'm saying. Anyways. Talk to Commander Tiveray. You're too late, Admiral. We knew you would storm in unaware and try to save the universe from the evil, manipulating Romulans. How predictable. Our new ship needs an adequate test of its battle readiness. Destroying the Walglinde should do quite well. Farewell, Captain. Empress Sela sends her regards.
Okay. That was odd. It's the hazard team, Nell. We have detected a vessel inbound at high warp. Please return to the Waglinde. Alright, let's go. Let's get this arc over with my god. The Romulan ship is hailing us, sir. Putting it on the main view screen now. You cannot win, Admiral. We are the vanguard of a new Romulan force that will sweep across the stars. All will tremble before Romulan might. Surrender now, and we may grant you a quick death. And they send birds of prey. Vanguard of our destruction. How's that going for you? Next! The Vanguard of Romulan Dominance. Don't tractor me, bro. Did you say something? I couldn't hear you over the sound of you dying in seconds. The vanguard of Romulan dominance in the galaxy. Good lord. Captain, we believe that was the only ship of its kind that the Romulans have been able to construct. With the loss of the Romulan research facilities and the Borg technology they were studying, we have blocked this unthinkable path. No, we haven't! Starfleet Command predicts that the Romulans will file a protest with the Federation Council over what they consider to be an unprovoked attack and interference in sovereign affairs. If past actions are any indication, the Council will be more inclined to consider the safety of the Quadrant over the Romulans' hurt feelings. <laughs> We've killed a bunch of your net. We killed a bunch of Romulan citizens. We destroyed billions of strips of latinum worth of military hardware or whatever the Romulan currency is probably not billions of strips but you get the idea we've cost we've damaged you irreparably militarily we've killed some of your best personnel by launching an unprovoked attack on a facility deep in your space but we're sorry and, um, yeah, that's about it. Toodles! Jesus. Depart system. My god. Remember when I said this game paints Starfleet in a very negative light? It does. This game... The hell? There we go. That was weird. This game makes Starfleet and the Federation look like monsters. But that's okay because it makes the Klingon looks it makes the Klingons look like monsters too. Basically nobody gets out of this game looking good. So that was Sharian Swords. A mission where you attack a Romulan where you launch an unprovoked attack on a Romulan facility. As opposed to your earlier unprovoked attack on a Romulan facility that you were chastised for, you know, the one where you committed genocide, this time you've committed officially sanctioned genocide against a Romulan facility, destroyed all their ships, destroyed their hardware, and in no way stopped them from pursuing Borg technology because they'll show up with it later in the game. Why is this here? Why is this not later in the game? If you, like, you reshuffled all the missions, if you could have reshuffled this, like, right after, right after the return, th this would have made way more sense. And then you could have put Cloaked Intentions after that. You know, and then the plot of your game would make a lot more sense.
You know, and then once people had done Cloaked Intentions, then they would gain access to Maul Rehan. And now you've, you know, then they would gain access to Tau Dewa. And now, you know, you, there's this fluid progression of story. You could have done so much better than to put this mission here. Because as it stands, it means nothing. But Alchemisted, you say, would be hypocritical for them to put it at the end of the game, because then you could assault this place with a ship decked out to the gills and Borg tech. Yeah, but it's just as hypocritical to, us to blow up a Romulan starship full of scientists later on in the game for using Borg tech with a ship decked out with Borg tech. So... You're a hypocrite either way. God, I want this arc over. I'm bored with this. Jesus. <laughs> that was Sharian Swords. Oh, I have to turn it in. All right. Let's see. Sharian Swords. You have performed admirably. The threat to the Federation is averted. No, it's not. An Empress Sela has been dealt a severe setback in her plans for conquest. Starfleet thanks you for your service. Okay, so I'm going to take the combat hyperimpulse engines because it and the shields are the most expensive things here, and then I will recycle them because they're crap. <laughs> they're crap compared to what I have now. I don't want it. That was Shorian Swords. This has been Rise of the Red Shirt. Romulan Arc needs to end. I'll see you guys later, so later. I feel like Tom Servo at this point. End! End! Cloaked Intentions is better. The Vault isn't, but Cloaked Intentions on a whole is better. Especially Coliseum. I like Coliseum. See you guys later, so later. Weapons!